There we go. Zach and Miri make a porno called Boner Tomahawk. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to I Like to Movie Movie, the podcast about movie movies. My name is Garrett Smith. My name is Dan Scully. And I, what was the what was the their porno called? I haven't seen that in forever. Boner Tomahawk. Wasn't very creative. No, no. Oh, no, what porno? was it in the movie? Star yeah. Wars. Star <laughs> so, like, I didn't know if there was a no. No, I was oh, okay. just thinking, like, you know, uh, I just rewatched that movie uh, while on vacation last week. Oh, nice. uh, that was one of the things that, for some reason, people decided they wanted to watch. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, that movie's fine. It's, yeah, uh, it's a delight. The chemistry of the leads is very uh, good. I really like uh, Seth Rogen and um, Elizabeth Banks in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, But anyway, I was just thinking, like, oh. I, what I didn't know if they actually made a Bone parody kind not, of thing in there in the movie not that i remember maybe they did uh i just figured if they were to make a porno of bone tomahawk it would definitely oh, yeah. be called boner tomahawk because that's the level of uh clever in, in, it would in definitely world. involve someone getting you know spit roasted yeah to uh borrow a hardcore porn term yes yes so well, that's wild yes uh, apologies to all of the listeners but uh, thank you for bearing with us as we dealt with various uh vacationings and fun yeah. shit like that but we are back back into your feed and yeah. uh we're here to talk about what we've been watching or what we've obtained and all that fun stuff um yeah. of course you can find us on the movie john podcast network you can find us at i like to movie on all of the things we use the numeric two for that but if you just search i like to movie movie you're gonna find us You'll that's just it. how this shit works so uh yeah so dude how did that that was that movie fun to watch because i remember really liking it when i was younger but that's how i feel about a lot of things that i no longer like yeah, uh, it was fun to watch. I feel like it held up better than I would expect a lot of other Kevin Smith movies would if I rewatched yeah. them now. It looks better than a lot of his other movies. Uh, and, you know, I mean, he said since he was literally trying to make a Judd Apatow, you know, he felt like Judd Apatow yeah, was yeah. making money on his kind of formula. So he just kind of tried to Judd Apatow his formula, you know, like brought some of his actors over and let them improvise and stuff. And so anyway, it's like, you know, it, it it definitely looks and feels a little more, I think, fun and energetic than some of his other movies, which is, I think, yeah. helpful in like a rewatch. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the jokes ha haven't aged like great and not even like honestly, not even that they've become problematic. Some some of them, I think, probably are in retrospect, but like a lot of them just aren't very funny. There, there's like a lot yeah. of it that just isn't very good. I remember when that movie came out, I wasn't aware that it was a Kevin Smith movie yeah. until I was like in the car on my way to see it. Uh -huh. yeah because i remember they didn't really push that angle of it because he was no. like coming off a cop out and yep. a couple other things that didn't work yep. and um yeah and i i remember enjoying it but I, I really don't remember anything except chester the molester cock and stuff that's <laughs> yes. all I, that and i i feel like i remember um is it craig robinson says revenge of the shit yeah i feel like that's in there yeah that's all yep. i remember yep the the all anal uh final finale of the trilogy i believe he specifies that every time he says the name of the movie he specifies that it's the all anal <laughs> finale he could deliver any line though yeah. and it's going to be funny because all oh. i remember is him saying with his cadence revenge of the shit <laughs> it's yeah. like it's funny stuff he's funny in the movie uh the funniest part of the movie is early in the movie they go to their high school reunion and brandon ralph is the guy that was very oh, hot yeah. that always made fun of um uh elizabeth banks's character uh, she now would like to have sex with him. Uh, she feels like it will help prove to herself that she's like, you know, changed in the time since blah, blah, blah. Not knowing that he is now an openly gay man and there with his boyfriend, uh, uh. whose name is something like, what is it? It's like, it's something St. Randy. It's like, it's like Gerald St. <laughs> Randy or something like that. Uh, and he's played by Justin Long. Uh, and Justin oh, Long, shit. I forgot he was in the, yeah. Justin Long and Brandon Routh have the funniest scenes in the movie, where they are just like a bickering gay couple at this high school reunion. Uh, one of whom I totally forgot about that, but I can kind of remember. Oh. I and I, I believe it was Justin Long's birthday the other day. Oh, I feel okay. like I caught that around the way. So happy birthday to Justin. Happy Long. birthday to Justin Long. And I got to say, Brandon Routh is one of those guys who runs every risk of being like a charismatic. Yeah. But because he's almost like aware of the way he looks. And the way he comes off, he ends up being great in everything. And he, like, gets the joke. He's very yes. funny. I agree. He's, like, really funny in this. And, uh, yeah, there's, like, some great stuff with Justin Long. His character is a, a 
maybe not even former, maybe current, uh, unclear, uh, gay porn actor. Uh, and him and Seth Rogen do a whole back and forth of uh, Seth Rogen, tra- him not wanting to say that he's a gay porn actor and Seth Rogen continuing to ask questions about what he does. And oh, so it's okay. like a whole yeah, back yeah. and forth of like, I'm in movies. Oh, what kind? have I seen your movies? I don't know if you've seen my movies. What kind of movies do you make? <laughs> oh, movies with all male cast. Oh, all male cast. Like Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. More like Glenn <laughs> and Gary suck Ross's fat, hairy cock. Like it's like, it, 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 it's just a long of yeah, that yeah. gag, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, when Kevin Smith gets his shtick going, it's good. Yeah. Um, when it doesn't get going, like I I I think I've come to the point where I can really say that uh the Jane Silent the Bob reboot. Ugh. I I hated that. It was not a good movie. It like <laughs> that even was just as, a crap movie. <laughs> even as a longtime fan, it like uh, it's it nostalgia. Yeah, it's nostalgia trip doesn't feel happy. You know? It's just like kind of a shittily made movie. And like yeah. credit to Kevin Smith for always being able to just like pull whatever strings he's got available. Yep. Oh, I'm at a comic con. Let's shoot it at a comic. Yep. Like he's yep. so good at that. And it's like, yep. but if it, if it yeah. ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. True to form. I think there's like one or two very good scenes in that movie. Yeah. And then otherwise it's just like not a very watchable m- movie, you know? Um, which is not the case for all of his movies, but um, that one in particular, I think, is is pretty rough. Yeah, when when we're criticizing him, though, that is one of the the critiques. Yeah, but I, it always just pisses me off when I see like something like Tusk, with which I think is like kind of brilliant. Me too. And then something like Yoga Hoses, which is kind of not. Yeah. But like, I I just always think like, this is the dude who made Dogma. Like, Dogma is so clever and smart. Yes. And it, it's it has a lot to say about faith and religion, and it has a poop monster. Uh-huh. Like it's it's wild, and it's just uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see I don't happens. know if I can make a huge recommendation on Zach and Miriam make a porno, but like I didn't hate it. You know, it was, yeah. I'm not it, planning on revisiting yeah. anytime soon. Yeah. Um, but uh, hey, did we talk about this on this show yet? I feel like we did not. I watched Hard Target for the first time. Have we talked about this on the show yet? I don't think we did. Hard Target's fucking crazy. <laughs> I, but Tori and I loved Hard Target. Hard Target's one of those movies that like starts at TNT 2 p.m. level of quality. You know what I'm saying yeah. by that? Like it starts as a movie your dad falls asleep to on the couch, like in the yeah, afternoon yeah. on a Sunday, you know, but yeah. like it steadily escalates from there until it gets to the finale where it fucking takes off into space and becomes like an incredible movie. I, we yeah, I, I think the last act of that movie is like completely bonkers insanity. Yeah. You got Wolf of riding his horse with his yes. bow and arrow yes. away from the exploding barn. Yes. You've got, I mean, like, that movie is it's not my favorite woo or my favorite van damme because yeah. i i do think like until it lets rip it's kind yeah. of shitty yeah, yeah yeah but um that's also kind of a kind of a perk yeah like you know like it's like kind of part of it but i mean by the time he's punching a snake unconscious yes and, and you realize what we're all here to do it yeah. really just it it makes sense yeah i like the early parts of the movie we really enjoyed but i think only because Tori and I discovered we both really kind of love Van Damme and we don't even yeah, really know why he's just like very charming in a way that is so unlike the other actors that I think of him being like in the league of, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. He's far from a Seagal yeah, in terms like, of, yeah. I think of him alongside of even like Arnold and uh, uh, Stallone and, mm. uh, and, and, you know, Norris and all those guys and stuff, but like, he is very um i don't know he's just like a he he's like a charming guy that seems like he doesn't even totally get why he's there all the time like he yeah. almost seems oh, surprised yeah. by his presence in these things and there's something i don't know he he just is unlike all the other i mean the thing i want to say that i don't want to say is that i feel like he's softer than the other guys but in like a positive yeah. way well he was a dancer before he was ever a martial artist okay that makes and sense his career started i believe he was a waiter and if okay. the 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 mythology if i because i grew up loving van damme yeah because i was a little karate kid yeah, yeah and i yeah. thought van damme was the best um i've never been that flexible but like yeah, yeah. you know he was the best and um 
he has a weird command of like comedy and showmanship that clashes with his accent, which if yeah. you watch some of his more recent stuff where he's like kind of meta y, he sort of gets it better. Like, you know, yeah. Schwarzenegger sort of actually became a good actor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I believe if the myth- if the mythology is correct, if what I remember from a little kid reading like Disney adventures and stuff, yeah, is that Van Damme got his break when the power went out at the restaurant he was waiting tables at. And so he entertained the guests with dancing and karate and feats of ballet and such. Amazing. And there was someone there that's just like, this kid with the strange accent and the lump on his head that I can't explain. Yeah. He's got the goods. Yeah. Get a gun in his hand. Put a mullet yeah. on his head. I yeah. want him punching snakes and doing splits between things that most people couldn't do splits between. Dude, there's a scene early in the movie where he fights like a gang of like street thugs, I guess you would call them. There's like three or four guys that like attack a woman in the streets and he like kind of defends her. And one of the guys is 100% just his stunt double. He's wearing the exact same clothes. He's got the same fucking mullet. And it's like, you didn't even do anything to disguise the fact that he's fighting his own stunt double right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Maybe in time cop, that would make sense when he's zipping through time and there's doubles and such, although he couldn't touch the doubles. It's against the rules. Become slime. Uh, Yeah. He's a, Van Damme fascinates me. I, I think he's, I mean, I, I really do like a lot of his movies. Yeah. Um, even that one, it's called Knockoff. Okay. I don't it's know. A, this it's one. a crazy pants caper oh. with, with, uh, with Joey uh, Pants? No, no, no. Like literal pants. Like it's about, um, like off brand jeans smuggling. Oh, okay. Great. And I believe it has Rob Schneider. I haven't seen it. I'm, I, it's either that or, one of them's knockoff and one of them's double team. And oh. one of them he's paired with Rob Schneider and one of them he's paired with Dennis Rodman. And both of them are totally worth watching. I believe I can confirm that the Dennis Rodman one is double team because double I, team. I believe they're referencing his nature as a basketball star in the title of the movie. Double okay, team, okay. I think. And then there's, I think, double impact where he plays twins. Yeah. Which right. every martial artist worth their weight in anything uh, plays twins. You got twin dragons. You got... Uh-huh. Uh, uh, actually, now I can only think of two, that and Double Impact. Yeah, he's he's something. And I will say about Hard Target is that it's the one time that his accent sort of makes sense because he plays a Cajun. Yes. And nobody on the planet knows how to do a Cajun accent except Cajuns. And even that's hard to grasp. And so Wilford Grimley is trying, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's trying. Because as I understand it, bizarre. Cajun is French-Canadian that went to the bayou. It's something so you like get that, a mix yeah. of Canadian french and the southern accent yeah and so it's this wild mix how that works and so his strange brussels accent that no one can place with his weird like charismatic by way of no charisma delivery yeah just jives like it like i'm like oh yeah he's he's cajun that works well and they also they try and explain that he's somehow from the bayou which like is a very funny thing to be like this Dutch man from the bayou. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, but Wilford Brimley is like trying so hard to do a Cajun accent. And it makes like everything about him funnier than it already is. Like him being in the, the only movie. accent Wilford Brimley can do is the my cheeks it, are made of gravy. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's all he can do. <laughs> it's so funny. But also, dude, the stunt work in that movie is so crazy. Yeah. Including, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, you've got you told me that it actually is Brimley, I think, riding away oh, yeah. from that explosion. Apparently, that was his demand, too. Like, Amazing. John Woo was like, we can do a stunt double. And he was like, only one person looks like Wolf of Brimley. <laughs> yeah. And only one person who looks like Wolf of Brimley is fucking dying to do this stunt. Yeah. Well, let me do it. Because he was a. we can all make fun of Wolf of Brimley, but there's no denying that that man was a goddamn badass. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a fucking uh, in the finale. Uh, Lance Henriksen is the villain of this movie. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you have an affinity for fully on fire stuntmen. Well, oh, yeah, I have never seen, to my knowledge, an actor do their own fire stunt before. But it is one million percent Lance Henriksen doing his own fire stunt because he's monologuing at Van Damme while his jacket is burning on his body. And as he continues to scream his monologue villainous plan at Van Damme, he starts taking his burning jacket off and then throws it to the side. And just like, it's all one take of this jacket just on fire on him while he monologues and then like takes it off mid monologue and throws it. It's incredible. Gotta watch it again. I barely remember that. And I feel like that's something I would remember fully. Oh, he's, it's oh, incredible. Lance Henriksen is a gift from God. Uh, he's awesome in this movie, man. He's, he's so, so good. great. Yeah. I, he we loved man. it. Hard Target was great. We loved it. You got to watch. Uh, have you seen Broken Arrow? Not yet. Okay, Broken Arrow, it's got your boy Christian Slater in it. Yeah. Um, 
it's I think Hard Target's probably the better movie. Okay. But Broken Arrow has and it, Broken Arrow has a villainous uh, Travolta turn, which we all know is fun because of Face Off and it is John Woo. But it's one of those movies where it's very similar to Hard Target, where as it's building up, you're like, this is goddamn ridiculous. But by the time that last reel hits, it's just pure mania, just yeah. absolute maniacal insanity. And the way that Travolta is ultimately taken out is like, beyond demented All it's right. so good dude. it's so good his final moment is like one of those great just travolta looking at the camera moments that that he's not cool enough to pull off but goddamn, he tries uh-huh. oh it's so good love it yeah uh, I, I feel like i i haven't really dicked around with letterbox you did do blood sport right we did do blood sport okay okay i i liked blood sport and I feel like I liked it as I understand it, which is that it yeah. is literally a Sunday afternoon. You fall asleep to this movie like, you know, TNT programmer. That's why I have such a fondness for that movie is because I have seen Bloodsport a hundred times. And yeah. every time it's been on TV in pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like it's very e- like I'm sure as a cohesive whole. Because it's a very, very, very soap operatically looking movie. Yeah. Um, it's Van Damme's first, so he like doesn't really know how to do anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the guy who he plays, Frank Ducks. Yeah. Is like a legendary badass martial artist who's also a total grifter, and his whole story is like complete bullshit that he made up. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, the whole Kumite thing is ridiculous. Yeah. But like the guy who plays his buddy in that is like a classic just dude who shows up in 80s movies i believe okay. he's in revenge of the nerds i know oh. he he plays one of cody's friends on step by step in a few yes. character arcs um yes. he's just like your standard guy but there are so many moments in that movie that are just like complete bonkers like the coin switch the you know you get the coin you keep the girl yeah. <laughs> that, thing, that is the best thing ever or That's when funny. uh the guy who plays van damme's big villain in every van damme movie chong lee yes um when that guy throws the uh the blind powder in his face uh-huh. so van damme spends the finale of the final fight doing like hey, yeah, yeah. it's really fantastic stuff Yes, just fucking it's, love I it. mean that that final reel is definitely fun, and I really the score was incredible. Yes. The score is like an amazing eighty score, uh, and and the aesthetics are like kind of up my alley. Like it's a little bit of that like sort of neony, you know, like capturing yes. some of that like Night City stuff. Um, so it was like I I liked it, but I it is wild to me. And I looked I looked on Letterbox to see if my impression of this was right. Because my impression of this is that of the three Van Dan movies that I've seen, to my knowledge, uh, Time Cop, Bloodsport, and Hard Target, that Bloodsport is the favorite, and Time Cop and Hard Target are maybe like battling for a kind of low spot on his like filmography favorites, right? See, I'm a Time Cop guy. Okay, I really like Time Cop. I think Time that Cop goes too. that saying because yeah. I love Ron Silver. Yeah. And I love time travel. Yeah. And I love karate. And you get so to watch it's, Ron Silver fight himself because of time yeah. travel, which is incredible. And become goops. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild. Yeah. Yes. I really liked that movie. And I, I looked it up on Letterboxd to see if, like, because that was my impression. I'm, I'm right. But, like, in a, you know, in a slight way where it's like, uh, Time Cop is the lowest rated, but by like 0.1 point, And Hard Target is next by 0.1 point, And Bloodsport is above both of them by, you know, 0.1 point. You know, so. It, I think it's a fondness thing. Like I have a huge yeah. fondness for blood sport. I don't even think I could review it objectively if I tried Yeah, because like that fell into my life at a time when I loved karate and did karate. And so it was just boom, it's on TV all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I just was, I was like, I can't believe this is how this has shaken out in, in the grand scheme of time that everybody's like blood sport. Cause oh, like, yeah. I was like, I mean, these- it might just be the title too. It could fucking be. blood sport. It is. I There's a, a video online where, you know, the scene where he like runs across the boats yes. to evade capture. Somebody turned that into a Mentos commercial just by editing the, you know, fresh goes better in life with Mentos fresh and food. Yeah. And it fits perfectly that's so funny it's lit like a mentos commercial it plays out like a mentos commercial and it, it just has that same sort of just like where you're watching and you're like is this <laughs> actually to quote uh to quote an old janine garofalo set 
this is her impression of anybody watching a Mentos commercial, which is, was this German? <laughs> <laughs> and like that's that's just how that kind of feels. Um, uh, I will say too, if you get if you get your hands on the two dollar bin at Walmart and can find a copy of Time Cop Two: The Berlin Experiment, starring Jason Scott Lee. Oh, uh, as far as straight to video sequels to uh, you know silly '90s actioners go, it's pretty good. All right. I'm a fan. I I know I have the DVD buried somewhere in my in my well, world. Like all these movies have sequels, by the way, too, which surprised me. Like there's even a Hard Target sequel that was made like really like like ten years ago or something. Yeah. Does uh, it star like Michael Dudikoff or something? Dude, dude, I think it stars uh Scott Atkins. I think. Hold on. Um. No way. Oh yeah, I, Scott Atkins kind of jumped on the Van Damme train. Like he did all the Universal Soldiers. Yeah. Um. Uh, it does indeed sure. star Scott Adkins. Yeah. Uh, hard target two from 2016. So not even, yeah. Like in the last like five years, dude, I honestly, Scott Adkins is one of those dudes who like, I, I just wish he would become an A-lister, but like the movies he's making were cool in the nineties. Yeah. But when it comes to just like straight up knockdown, drag out karate shit, there's like few better in the game outside of the, you know, the, uh, uh, what's it, a uh, Timo Tahanto gang? Yeah, I mean, I'm genuinely surprised he has not shown up in a John Wick yet. I assume that event if they make enough of them, he will. You know, he has to. Yeah. He has to. Yeah, yeah. He, it's like great. Like it's his style is a great mix of like the uh, circus like technique of of like a Jackie Chan. Yeah, but with like the brutality of something like the raid yeah, yeah um like his his universal soldier movies which people forget the original universal soldier with uh uh Van i watched Damme. that recently that's, that's a that's a roland movie. emmerich movie yeah that's, that's a, wild that's a stinky movie i didn't like that i one. i have a fondness for it but yeah that's yeah. not a that's not a great movie but yeah, yeah. like the the universal soldier i think the reckoning with scott yeah. atkins yeah gnarly shit totally yeah. badass um yeah i want to see some more atkins but even his like um uh, I always forget whether it's called Accident Man or Mr. Accident. I know what you mean, yeah. I heard that's great. He's like, it's it's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of charisma. And it's like the style of charisma that all of these 90s karate guys uh, applied. Yeah. But he's actually like a little better at it. Like he's yeah, got, yeah, yeah. he's a better actor than Van Damme was at the time. Um, yeah, he's keep, he's keeping that torch burning. Yeah. Uh, dude, you want to like dig into some of the uh, shit that we've been like watching from our buy piles? I know that's been like a thing that we've been yeah. having fun doing. Well, I will say this: I haven't bought any of these. Well, I, I did buy the original, The Howling. Oh, nice! Yeah, I think that movie is a stone cold masterpiece. Yeah, I know it you is loved like, it. yeah, it's so good. It's yeah. just I gotta like, rewatch it. It's a movie, 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 movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. The transformations are incredible in that movie. I, I incredible. They rotoscope an animated one, and it's yeah. in the middle of a fuck scene. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You've watched the sequels. I'm getting through them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I actually would like to research what happened with the rights to the yeah. Howling series, because that first one is like a legit good movie. Second one's a lot of fun. Um, but immediately it's like a huge drop off in quality mm. of production. Like it's mm -hmm. just like a crappier production. Yeah. And like, I'm up to six. I watched oh boy. six and um, one, two, and three. One is like, like I said, I think incredible. Two is a lot of fun, but you make some concessions. Three has some value, but yeah, it's running out. Four through six are just straight up dog shit. Just like Ugh. absolute crap top to bottom. Are they even and trying weird. to be like howling movies? Like, is it the that sixth kind of crap? one? I don't even rightly believe has much by way of werewolf. In it. Okay. Yeah. Like a guy does transform when the moon is full. Yeah. But I don't know if I'd call what he undergoes <laughs> werewolfing or any. It's yeah, yeah. Man. And like, like the fourth one, everything is ADR and poorly and by actors that i don't even think are the actors performing because oh they don't look like the way that they sound it, it's i have never seen it like yes it's understood that a lot of times in the horror genre there's the law the law of uh, diminishing returns when these diminish they just fucking crash yeah and what's weird is four is the only one that has any sort of plot similarity to the books i read the entire trilogy of books 
And um, the only connection that the first one has with the book is a couple character names. That's it. Not even last names, just first names. The third one is probably the closest adaptation to the first The Howling book. Okay. But, and I, I liked all the books a lot. They were really ask. good. They read real easy, a lot of fun. Great little trilogy. Not like high art or anything, but just like solid horror stories that read and they have good characters and fun. Yeah. You know, I read each of them over the course of like maybe three days a pop, each one. They, they were real slick and easy. But man, it is, this series has just, and, and apparently it only gets worse. So I'm just like, I might actually give up. Yeah, yeah. How many are there? There are two more. Okay. So there is a seventh one that's called, oh, it has like a name. It's not even The Howling. Uh, and then the, then the eighth one is like a weird reboot. Okay. So. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. The reboot sounds familiar for some reason. Yeah. So the, the seventh one is called Howling New Moon Rising. Okay. And then, uh, tw- let's see, 25 years later comes Howling Reborn in 2011 jeez oh no not 25 sorry uh 16 years later i had a long day math is not my friend they're all on tubi so it's great because you get a commercial right when you need one like an ad pops up and you go oh cool i'm gonna do something else with my brain for a few seconds yeah oh i'm this Felipe mora guy who did the howling two and three why i watched a movie of his recently i think Oh, he, um, he he did some movies with uh, Rucker Howard. That's why. Okay. Well, his entry, the uh, the the second one, is really a lot of fun. Okay. Um, oh, he did the third one too. The third so. one is also a lot of fun. Um, like I, I would say, I genuinely liked two and three, despite the fact that I don't think I could call them good. Yeah. But uh, four was just just so bad. Although there is a guy who melts at the end, and it's a really great effect. Yeah. Uh, f- or maybe that was five. I'm really running out. No, five is the one where he melts. But yeah, it's just like none of them are connected. They're all just like, and I- I'm pretty sure that all of them are straight to TV after three. Yeah. Okay. But that man, I-, I am just, I am not even remotely impressed <laughs> with these sequels. Like, yeah. and you know me, I, I can, I can forgive a bad oh, yeah. movie, especially when I know what angle it's coming from. But like these were, I'm doing other things while they're on movies because if I paid attention to this, I would surely never finish it. <laughs> it's like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I also had a couple really, really good movies that uh, I watched recently. Um, one of them being David Lynch's The Elephant Man. Oh yeah, I've never seen this. Dude, get on it. Yeah, it is incredible. Yeah. And really, really incredible. It's so beautiful to look at. The performances are just phenomenal, top to bottom. It's got a great score. Um, I actually saw a thing on Twitter today. It was an interview with David Lynch where he was talking about how Mel Brooks, who produced the movie, yeah, um, some other guy was like, "Oh, I got, a, I got a guy for this Elephant Man movie. You want to do Mel?" David Lynch, uh, I'm going to show you Eraserhead, and Lynch was just like, and I told him. No, don't show him Eraserhead. <laughs> he'll, ne- he'll never, he'll never want to work with me. Yeah. But uh, apparently they screened it and Mel Brooks came out and the first time he met David Lynch, he just hugged him and was like, you got to do this movie. You're perfect <laughs> for it. You're insane and I love it. <laughs> and so, and, and he's right. The tone of it is, is it, it is very much like Eraserhead in look and tone, but it's just yeah. a really wonderful movie and it's gross, but it's, it's, it's like lovely and kind and nice and it's a movie about dignity and about yeah. humanity but it's in david lynch's lens and it's based on the papers of the doctor that worked with merrick and um i don't know it's really good and uh what's his name kenny baker shows up for a few oh, minutes that's cool and there's a little boy in the movie that i was like i can't place this guy why do I know who this little boy is? And this was made in 1980. It turns out the little boy is Dexter Fletcher, who went on to be in a lot of Guy Ritchie movies and went on to direct Rocket Man. <laughs> That's why I know his name, actually. That's very funny. Yep. He's I the guy that Rocket came Man. in after the uh, rapist left uh, the Queen movie. Uh, he came in and finished it. What? Uh, Brian Singer. Couldn't think oh. of his name. Yeah. yeah. And so, the Queen uh, movie. Now I get it. Okay, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. 
not the queen with Helen Mirren, the yeah, queen with a, uh, I literally, with, all the uh, details that you presented, I was like, what? Like I, I, my I brain's only together. making connections and in, in, yeah. in, in, in slight ways at this moment. But yeah, man, the elephant man was just, I, I was so blown away by it. Um, yeah, I guess we should just get into our stacks. Cause I, I don't want to say too much because two of the movies that I watched that I really liked, I have in my stack of purchased Blu-rays. Ooh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I did not like bring my actual Blu-rays here to stack up, but I'll just like, I'll I'll group a bunch of these together for you because it'll be easy to talk about them that way. I, uh, on a recent Arrow sale, I grabbed a bunch of movies directed by uh, Kinji Fukasaku. uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kinji Fukasaku, I think probably most people will be familiar with um, because like pretty much the last movie he directed was Battle Royale. Uh, which is an insane movie to be like your last movie, you know? Yeah. Um, I know he, li- I think he like started work on the sequel, but his son ended up finishing it. Cause I think he died in the, in the process of making it or something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah. so he uh, is also the, the sequel's guy that- only okay. Okay. He's also the guy that made battles of that honor and humanity, which is a movie I discovered and really liked, you know, personally discovered and liked uh, a couple years ago. Um, so he's had a very long career, right? Like he started making movies in like the, maybe the late sixties, the early seventies. Uh, and Arrow has a bunch of his early movies. Uh, so I grabbed a bunch of them. I watched uh, Street Mobster, uh, which stars the same guy that is in Battles Let Honor Humanity. He's a great actor. Uh, his name is Bunta Sugawara. Suga- 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 Bunta Sugawara. Ooh, that's a great name. Yeah. And uh, he plays a great, just like gangster, basically. And Street Mobster was a really good looking movie that was like kind of a typical Yakuza movie, in my opinion which means it was just kind of confusing and a little hard to follow, but full of like <laughs> really cool scenes, you know, like yeah. lots of good scenes, but a little hard to follow. Um, Did you ever see at- a sauna team? No, I've not seen that. It's like, it's one of those movies that like I watched it and I was like, man, I know that was good. And I got no fucking clue what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, Street Mobster is like a little more in the category of like kind of understandable. I've seen uh, Yakuza movies that are like way more confusing, but it, it was kind of confusing. But it looks great, dude. It's like full of the stuff that I love. It's all these like, you know, uh, just Japanese clubs that are just covered in neon signs all at night, you know, and seeing people like dancing around. There. I just like I loved the way it looked. I was having like a blast watching it. I got to um, get into this guy. I really want to see Battles Without Honor and Humanity. That movie's great. He also made this movie Cops versus Thugs. Uh, okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, that's like I think considered like one of the kind of like I don't know like magnum opus Yakuza movies. Uh, and I thought it was fine. Uh, you know, I, I like to read about it. I think people consider it like one of the the greats of that genre. Um, but it is very confusing. It's it's the the thing that I liked about it was it kind of feels like a postscript to the Battles Without Honor Humanity series. Like mm. cops versus thugs is about how those two words mean the same thing. One of them is just sanctioned by law to be allowed to do it. <laughs> ah, uh, the yeah. old thematic weight of every cops and robbers movie. Ex- exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's like the Battles Without Honor Humanities series kind of charts the rise and fall of the Yakuza. And so then this movie felt to me like it acted like a kind of postscript of like, once the Yakuza fall, all you're left with is like street gangs and cops. And most of them, both cops and gangs are just like former Yakuza. Like they're yeah, all yeah. just kind of like criminals that some of them have decided to start working for the law. Some of them decided to continue working against it. Um, so it was kind of interesting, you know, um, but I didn't, I didn't think it was great. I, I just like kind of enjoyed it. Uh, the one that I thought was great that I bought uh, was a movie of his that is uh, pretty late in the Yakuza cycle, like really late, actually, 1977. It's called Doberman Cop. Doberman Cop. Okay. Uh, and it's like, I guess it's based on a manga, um, but it's literally like a, a Japanese Dirty Harry story. But the Japanese version of Dirty Harry is like a country bumpkin that like comes okay. to the city because of uh, like a missing girl from his like little town that he's like the, the chief of police at or whatever. He's like the only detective in like a small town basically. And he's like looking for this missing girl. And there's this murder that happens in Tokyo in the big city that he thinks might be related to the missing girl. So he shows up with a pig on his back and walks into the police station and offers them the pig as like, hey, this pig is good. It'll be really tasty if you cook it. It's live pig. I, I raised it. I, this is my gift to you to say, hello, here I am to investigate this missing girl. And basically it's like 
the Tokyo police are like, we want nothing to do with you. And he is basically like, well, where I come from, the only law is fucking me. So I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to investigate what I'm investigating, regardless of whether that is within what you consider the law to be here in Tokyo. It's That's a, badass. It's a really fun movie. It's uh, like, listen, the pig is yours. You do with it what you want. Throw it in the yeah. trash, whatever. Yep. But stay the fuck out of my way. That's right. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, it stars Sonny Chiba. Sonny Chiba plays oh, Doberman right Cop. Uh, he's great in it. Uh, and he's uh, got charisma, man. That dude, guy yes. has charisma in spades. Yes. And like, he doesn't always make the best movies, but like Sonny Chiba, like, he's electric on screen. Yeah. I, I thought this movie was great. And it's very clear that this movie, uh, uh, some of what I'm saying, I'm repeating just from like the arrow box. You know, they always give you a nice little like history yeah. lesson on the movie. Um, it definitely feels like a Japanese director trying to make an American crime movie. Like he, nice. they're, they're, from watching a bunch of other Yakuza movies, they never do stuff like what I'm about to describe, which does happen in Doberman Cop, which is like a girl is being held hostage in a hotel room that's like on the 20th floor of a 30 floor building. And all the cops are outside the door of the hotel room trying to negotiate. The guy inside is like, absolutely not. I'm going to fucking kill this girl. So Doberman Cop is like, give me a fucking rope. I will rappel off the roof of this building into the, you know, I will just swing into the room through the window and, and just beat the shit out of this guy the moment I land, which of course he does successfully and saves this girl. Yeah. And that, that, that is the kind of like heightened American action that never happens in these Yakuza movies. Yeah. The Yakuza movies are very grounded. People shoot each other with guns and punch each other a lot. That's like the height of action in Yakuza movies, you know? So it's like, it does very much feel like they're trying to make a sort of hyper stylized American action crime movie, just like set in Japan among their like kind of typical Yakuza story. It, it was cool. I really liked it. I, I highly would, recommend. I just, the title alone, I'm sold on. Yeah, highly recommend. Doberman Cup. Really, well, really we'll cool do movie. we'll do some trading when we eventually get together. Yes. Um, speaking of crazy American blockbusters, yeah, I got my hands on what I believe to be a bootleg. Oh, okay. I believe that they took the Blu-ray that used to exist and no longer exists and just copied it. Yes, yes. And sold it on eBay with their own artwork, which is why I was finally able to watch True Lies Aha! again in Blu-ray fashion. It looks it looks great. Did, and, and like this cover is printed on printer paper. Yeah, that's amazing. But Did, it is like the legit cover. Yeah. Man, oh man, this movie. I know that there's there's like a turn against this movie now. You know and, what's weird uh, about that turn against? I the don't movie? give a shit. This I, movie kicks ass. I think the turn against the movie is mostly related to, I don't know if you remember this, but when we did the live movie movie show, um, we were using True Lies for our Arnold uh, episode. And so I was looking stuff up for it. And one of the jokes we got to make was, I can't even Google this movie because when you image search True Lies, all you get is the strip tease. You yeah. just get images of Jamie Lee Curtis and the strip tease. I think the whole turn on this movie is not actually about the movie. It is about the way, you know, just culture perceives the movie, has decided to perceive the movie and people yes. reacting to that. You know what I'm Agreed. saying? Agreed. And that happens so often because yeah. I, I went into it this time. I said, all right, I'm going to because I'm not the guy who gets upset by these things. I don't really believe that watching a movie causes people to behave a certain way en masse. Yeah. I like to give people more credit to be able to separate entertainment from you know indoctrination yeah. i think that's just a weird thing like okay you know and i i see the connection there i just don't i i think i just have a much higher and, and don't get me wrong i have an extremely low opinion of people <laughs> but i still think that that i just i this idea that 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 watching a movie makes people behave or believe right. certain things i just am not fully on board with that but i was like i'm yeah. gonna watch this with an open mind the charges of sexism in this movie, I don't get on board with because yeah. this is a movie that I think wears that on its sleeve. I do too. And actively engages with it. Yeah. It is aware of the fact that Tom Arnold and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger are not necessarily good about the way that they're treating Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. And I don't think that it's like condemning her or like, I, I really think that it's, it's complicated on purpose. Uh, one thing I did notice is that Tom Arnold is extremely high on cocaine. <laughs> that movie. sounds right. He is constantly like, <laughs> it's very <laughs> weird that I'd never noticed this before. Now the, the idea that 
that there's racism in this movie carries a little more water with me. Yeah, totally. I don't think that it's malevolent in intention. I think right. it's just dated and wonky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the tone of it is so Three Stooges-y that it's hard yeah. to really take it that seriously. I'm, um, I'm like very okay with being like, yeah, that's definitely like a racist depiction of uh, Middle Eastern yeah. people and still enjoying the movie and like that th that character is like a funny character and scripted to be funny you know yeah. what i mean like he's a funny character he's kind of an idiot yeah um and like i said like i don't think there's any malevolence it's a big right. fucking lark it's just like it's, i don't think it, that there's malevolence i don't it, think that it's meant to be that way but it is dated so like it doesn't bother me but i get it yeah that's uh, yeah that's, that's, that's kind of I, I mean fuck there's a hand movie. grenade with a wedding ring on it i know i know as the pull pin and i do i mean but, the movie i whether it's good at engaging with the sexual politics that it's like uh uh kind of like putting on screen or whatever i you know i think you could probably argue about that i guess yeah that could be argued I, you know but i think that it is as you're suggesting it's like the movie is about its sexual po it's literally about the gender politics it is about like yeah. a wife that stays at home and a man that goes to the office and the way their relationship is crumbling and the fact that they're keeping secrets between them. And that's actually what's exactly. contributing to all of this. True and, lies. Yeah. And once they, once she gets to be a spy and he gets to kind of like uh, have to view her domesticated life differently and see that she's capable and all that, like it helps their marriage and blah, 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 blah. Right. It's like, it, it it's is all I, in there. Yeah. The big thing that I read in a couple articles, cause like when I, when I finished the movie, I was like, I still don't get it. I mean, like yeah. I, I, I understand. I hear it, but I, I just I'm not subscribing to it. The yeah. one thing that 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 I think a lot of the articles get wrong is that striptease scene. They're like, yeah. this is a scene where he is undoubtedly doing something terrible to yeah, yeah, his yeah. wife. Yeah. And they're like, but then he's rewarded for it. Yeah. But they're leaving out the part where the bad guys break into that scene. And because he wrongfully involved her, she's now being captured and potentially tortured by actual terrorists. Right. Right. Yes. yes. You know, like, so it's not, he's not rewarded. And for the first, like for the first act of that third act, cause this yeah. is a pretty long movie. It is. Yeah. They are not on good terms because of that. <laughs> right. Right. The first yeah. thing that happens is she hits him in the face, despite the fact that they're about to get tortured. Yeah. And then there's that great scene where they give him truth serum and she uses oh, yeah. this as an opportunity to, it's got that great line where she's like, did you ever kill anybody? And he's like, yeah, but they were all bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, so it's very much about that. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it, it, I guess once again, you could call it dated, but, yeah. and we also have to remember, like, this was based on a French, slightly action rom com. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. has very much that style of politics to it in yeah. regards to it. But, yeah. and, you know, I, I, ignore all that. It is so much fun. Oh, this I, movie, movie holds fun. up. Still my favorite Arnie movie. Still my favorite camera movie. The scene, the, the bridge is out. Yeah. There's a great moment where like when, right before they, they grab hands when he's like, grab it, baby, get it. And they do. I was, I got chills. It, it It's really emotionally charged. It's very well done. I, this movie holds a special place for me because like, I definitely saw this on TV and then on VHS, like as a pretty young kid and I hadn't seen any bond yet. So this to me was a Bond movie, basically. Like, yeah. This was what I understood Bond to be. And that's definitely like one of the things that's going on in the movie, right? It's like oh, right off the bat at the beginning, he pulls off the wetsuit and it comically yep. reveals his white tuxedo. Yep. That's, yep. that's purposefully yeah. Bond. So it's like, so it was my, in my little kid head, it was my understanding of like, yeah, these are what Bond movies are. And I think it's kind of why I've never totally gotten on board with Bond since because no single Bond movie lives up to what True Lies is. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> that's true, it, yeah. you know. Uh, so yeah, um, I, it definitely holds a special like nostalgic place for me, uh, and and I think holds up uh, the times I've watched it in adulthood. It's fun. It's just like a fun Dude, movie. The action looks good. It's yeah. so much fun. The scene where they finally kiss as the mushroom cloud goes yeah. off in the background. That's like that's like the pinnacle of '90s action filmmaking to me. Like that is yeah. high fucking art in the middle of a movie that is just silly fun. Yeah, like that is that that is Cameron just like at his peak to me is that shot it's just awesome for some reason the yeah. thing i always remember most from that movie is the dumbest smallest thing but it's when arnold is just walking into traffic and so tom arnold comes alongside him to be like come on buddy come on you know and oh yeah, yeah and a truck like almost hits them and just as they're walking by tom arnold just looks up at the driver and goes fucker he just like gives yeah, him yeah. the middle finger fucker that's because uh, that was when uh, Harry was about to go meet up with his his wife for lunch yep. uh, by surprise, but he overhears her phone call with Bill Paxton's Simon. Uh, Simon. Yeah, 
Um, and he's he's great. I got a little dick, man. It's embarrassing. <laughs> he's so great in it. Um, oh, and yeah, and like the, so, he's just like sulking as yeah. the trucks. But there's that great moment too where uh, he has that hallucination where um, when he's in the the used car with uh, yes. Simon and Simon's trying to sell him, he's like, "I got this broad right now, man. She's good to go." And he's just being a total pig. And then he just has that fantasy where he just shatters his face with a punch. <laughs> But then they cut back to reality, and Schwarzenegger's just giving him like a, yeah, it's it's so good. And I think that's probably what I like about it most is this is Schwarzenegger at his most charismatic. Oh yeah, hands down. And like his star, his insanely unlikely star power, is at its strongest here. I think. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I that might be his best performance in a movie. Uh, oh yeah, overall, he's so good. It's yeah. just so funny. Yeah, oh, it's incredible. It's um uh i will drop a what was one of the other ones we watched oh okay okay this is a great one to talk about really quick um no you know what? i'll save one okay i watched django prepare a coffin uh which is like a spaghetti western that i also bought in the arrow sale uh it's one of like i think the later django sequels it does not even star franco nero uh it stars <laughs> eric stoltz no uh terrence hill and he is no Franco Nero, um, but pretty fun. I enjoyed it overall. I honestly, I think if it wasn't called Django, I might've even liked it more. Something about having already seen the original Django and liking it so much made me like brush up against this movie's take on Django. Even mm. though I think I understand Django to be like a Bond character where it's like, whoever's playing Django, that's the tone of Django this movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's true. there's like very few consistencies um between each bond actor yeah I don't yeah say, excuse me i don't want to say few but there are inconsistencies i'll say yeah they you know they each have a kind of personal take on who that man yeah. is and you know uh and uh and anyway and so but it's it's a pretty good spaghetti western it's got a lot of good action in it like good action like the way you and i like to look at nice clean long takes oh yeah it's, dude there's like a stagecoach uh like chase in this where you just get these great long shots that hold on the stagecoach as they are fucking zooming across like a field and guys on horses are like jumping off their horses onto the coach and stuff. So, like it was some good shit. Like there was some really, really good shit in it, but it all, I got to catch up with all the Django's man. The whole thing is that it builds to like, cause you know, the first movie, this is, I think I can get away without this being a spoiler, but the, you know, the first Django movie is about a guy that carries a Gatling gun in a coffin on his back, you know, yeah, that's like the whole thing. So this movie starts with Django having to fake his own death. And so we see him burying a coffin at the very beginning of the movie. And what the whole movie turns out to be about is the journey back to the coffin so that we can get to the finale because we never actually see what's in that coffin. Like we just see yeah. him burying a coffin so that we, get, we build all the way to this finale where he's digging a grave for himself and the villain comes up and he's like, I see you're digging your own grave. And Django gets to be like, I'm digging yours, bitch. And like, and then, <laughs> you know, it gets explosive. Blaka, 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 it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is, it's very fun. Uh, a really, really strong ending. So, yeah. oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I want to catch up with the Django's. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I like uh, that one. I've discovered, and I did this accidentally. I, uh, because this is hard to find in 4K, I had to get Whiplash on eBay. Yeah. Cause I'm, you know, I've been, uh, that's been a rocking out the movie. drums lately. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to get that. But as a result, I discovered that uh, a lot of steel books go for real fucking cheap on eBay. Ooh. Look at the artwork on Carrie. Oh, I love it. Isn't That's that incredible? beautiful. Yes. And then also, uh, because I love the sequel so much, I, I grabbed the steel book of this. Nice. And that's a really nice looking steel book, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's a great but, movie. Um, like, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the sequel because that first so one bad. is a great movie. I almost, in a weird, I mean, it's definitely, this is a dumb thing to say, but like, it feels like people forgot A Quiet Place is a great movie. I don't know. Yeah. It's just got such an airtight script. It's done yeah. so well. It was like such an unlikely thing to, yeah. to have really taken. And it just works. The sequel is really good. I can't wait like, to see really, it. Like, really, really good. I, yeah. I was very into it. Um, but I want to highlight this because this was... Uh, suggested to us by our buddy cozy rye oh, yeah. and it was uh it was on amazon for like eight dollars and i was ordering another thing so i just tacked it on but happy birthday to me Ooh, i gotta get this okay. movie rocks yeah 
it's total trash, but it's like a slasher that has pretty good performances in it. Yeah. It has an ending uh-huh. that I'm not going to say anything, but it was one of those where they did like the reveal and I was like, okay, it's that reveal. Yeah. But that's not the reveal. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, no, it's not. Awesome. And because like when it finally got to it, I was watching it on a very tired Sunday and I was just like, this is a lot of fun. But like, you know, what sets this apart from the rest besides the fact that the acting's actually pretty good for what it's yeah, worth? Yeah. And then it hit like the twist. I was like, that's the twist? You gotta be fucking... Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it hits the most like balls to the wall bonkers twist. Just a total just like swing for the fences. And it 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 hits the top of the fence and bounces back in field. But man, it's a crazy crack of the bat. <laughs> it was... Uh, it's it's wild. Um well, I'll yeah, tell you what, I mean, I'll try and get my hands on it as soon as I can. And maybe we can do Cozy a favor and do a little epi on that one. We should. I yeah. I, I don't think I, I, it was one of those movies that I, I watched just thinking like, oh, it's probably going to be shitty, but it'll be fun. And I was fully engaged the whole time. And it's just so much fun. And it's cool. funny, crazy violent, but man, that ending and the device that they use to do uh, one of the reveals is like, it's just a crazy effect and it's yeah, a very yeah. basic effect, but it's done quite well, cool. but also kind of shitty. I, I don't, it's cause I don't want to say it. You'll know what yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. when you see it, Okay, but it was, uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's bananas, dude. <laughs> totally banana pants. I had such a blast. Cool. Cool. Highly recommend. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that, man. I actually, I have like a few more movies I'd like to get to. If you want to spend a couple more minutes here, I'll try and run them down. I'm down. Cause I, I have like a, I have like a, a, a coup de gras that I'm building up to. Okay, but okay. here I'm just gonna knock these off just because they arrived right. today. Um, because I just finished reading 2001: A Space Odyssey, and it was one of the best books I've ever read. I'm on a space kick, and um, before it goes out of print, like all James Gray films seem to do, ah, got me some Astro Dad. Astro Dad, yeah, I love that and movie, man. It's so good. Yeah, and because uh, for some reason this entire franchise was on sale for ten dollars, I just have the Paranormal Activities now. I believe. Because, I- uh, I may own the same set for the same reason. It was so cheap. Yeah. Um, and I finally did revisit my uh, memories of murder. Oh, dude. Yeah. How well? I mean, I have not seen this yet. I'm very much looking forward to it. It's so good. If you love Zodiac. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is where it's at. Um, especially because at least at the time that this came out, um, we didn't have a solution. Yeah. So that's part of the thematic way to this. Um, but I'm working on a piece about it. And so that's I, I had to revisit it. But like, this is a great criteria just like super great it's got really good special features and stuff and it it does engage with the fact and the special features that at the time that i believe parasite was really like doing good business this popped back into just the world because it was like oh by the way we solved it you know like it's yeah it's, but it's just a great movie it's got that weird korean sense of humor but it also is very brooding um really heartbreaking stuff it looks beautiful and it's like oddly a great sneaker movie there's a lot of like <laughs> sneakers imagery in this that just right. i don't know it clicked with me this time i like i'm it. very glad i revisited that and this it's weird because this was just quite literally a trying to get something over the uh free shipping hump oh yeah so for five dollars i'm finally gonna watch master and commander dude i've never seen this and i fell in love with peter weir this year that is like on my that's like high on my list of like i, I want to see that well, it's going to be, I'm probably going to watch it this weekend, especially because they just seem to have announced that See there's going to be a sequel finally. Yeah. Jenna so. loves this movie. And she was like, yeah, the books are like huge. And, and I, a friend of the show, Jacob, yeah. he says like, he's read some of the books and they're great. And I'm down for a good pirate movie. Pirates. Yeah. Um, I'll save my big, my big, uh, uh, had to get this shipped from overseas and I'm glad okay. they made it region free rock and roll piece that just arrived. Well, I'll I'll kind of hit you with my like final little collection of stuff here. Then um, one thing we watched uh, for Killer Bees, we're working on a Peter Weller episode, and we watched this movie called Shakedown. Have you ever heard of or seen Shakedown? I think I've heard of it. So Shakedown, but I I mean I, I guess that's functionally useless because I have no knowledge of it. Well, it's from 1988. It stars Peter Weller and Sam Elliott, and Ooh, Peter Weller plays like two a- leathery men. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peter Weller plays like a legal aide uh, who I think works for just like the public defender's office. Uh, And so like it's about this like murder trial where a drug dealer 
100% murdered a cop. That is what happened. He's admitting that that's what happened. But according to the drug dealer, the cop never identified himself and pulled a gun on him. And so he defended his life um, and found out he was a cop after the fact. Uh, so this and- is a documentary? Right, dude. It's actually it is this movie is a cab AF. Like it's yeah. like very much like a all of the cops in the city Can are we make corrupt that a and bad. Stick yeah. AF. <laughs> it is. Uh, but so it's like it. So it's all about that, and then like uh, um, Sam Elliott is a police officer, but he's like I think he's maybe like an undercover cop that's just like friends with Peter Weller. And anyway, it's this like it's one of those movies that's like kind of sprawling. Like scenes are just kind of happening and like things keep developing kind of rapidly, but every scene is really compelling because like Peter Weller, we, as we've been watching more of his movies, he's a fucking really compelling actor. He oh, has yeah. like a monologue in every movie we've watched that is just like nothing else is happening except Peter Weller talking. And it's the most exciting scene in the movie. He's just I grew like, up with him as RoboCop. Yeah. And it wasn't even really until uh, he had like a character arc on Dexter. Yeah. That I was like, man, I, he's actually pretty good. And then I only recently caught up with Naked Lunch. And I was like, yeah. shit, he's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, he like all of his characters, at least in like the 80s stuff we've been watching. I kind of get the impression that he might be like one of the first quote unquote yuppies. Because they're all okay. for, they're all former hippies that are now like upwardly mobile, like making their way into money. Yeah, like every single it's one. It's funny because these... that's what he plays in Dexter too. He's like a CI that yeah. Every single one of these characters says like groovy and man and like they all talk like that, but like they're all like making money as like le- like doing like you know law or something. You know, it's like yeah, it's really yeah. weird. Um, but. So he's, I'm going to put this in my list of things to see. because You have to see Shakedown. I'm not kidding. You have to see this movie because it's like everything I just said about the plot and how it's like interesting and relevant now and stuff is great. But it's also like a fucking wild action movie. It's got really fucking good stunts, all shot seemingly on location around New York City at night in the 80s. It's like it looks great. Oh, same director as The Protector with Jackie Chan. Yes. The uh, Jackie Chan, Danny Aiello comedy classic. Gl- that Glicken, is actually what's very name? good. Glickenhouse. James Glickenhouse. Great name. Yeah. Dude, Shakedown fucking rocked. We loved it. It's really fun. It's really funny. Uh, it. When you get to the finale, you'll understand what I mean, both in the scene itself and sort of the way in which uh, the characters just abandon the entire ethos of the movie before to like have a finale. Uh, nice. It feels like a Fast and Furious movie. Like it feels nice. like a lost Fast and Furious sequel is like kind of the tone of it ultimately. It's great. There's a scene where Sam Elliott at a bar monologues about how he was in love with a girl once. He, lo- he was madly in love with her. And she invited him up to her apartment, which was like on the 38th floor of this high rise in New York. And she had just waxed the floor. So it was like beautiful and clean. And she had this beautiful little puppy that he called over to himself. And as it came over on the waxed floors, he missed it when he tried to grab it. And it slid across the floor, straight out the window, down 38 floors and fucking died. And he was never able to speak to that woman again. The love of his wife, the love of his life just walked out and he never saw her again because he couldn't recover from it. Dark. It's, it is he's just like and it's sam elliott he's in his sam elliott yeah. draw and he's then just, that that dog yeah. came after me and he went down yeah, the and he's got that kind of draw where things are stuck in his mouth and he's i heard him hit the floor dude he's like he made one last yelp of he's pain. just like slowly delivering this monologue about the love of his life and it just turns into the dog fucking fell out the window and fell 38 stories and fucking died like it is incredible. It's an incredible movie. You That's have some Gremlins it. chimney shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn. That's he, hardcore. Everyone must. Man, see that Shake, sounds though. incredible. It's he's great. a little it, bit beef jerky, yeah. and he's a little bit barbecue sauce. Yeah. So together, they're shakedown. It's, now, I'm looking at the thing good. here. There's an uncredited co-writer, James Borelli, okay, who wrote that movie Cat Chaser that Andy had recommended to you. Oh, that also okay. has Peter Weller in it. Yeah, Abel um, Ferrara, that I haven't I seen, that. but yeah. it's Abel Ferrer. Yeah who is just my favorite of just filmmakers who I'm positive smell. <laughs> uh, I'll hit you with another quick one before I get to my coup de gras. Uh, the Hot Rock. I watched The Hot Rock on Criterion Channel yesterday. This is a... Oh, P- yeah, I saw you sent that link over. Dude, 
this movie rocks. So it's a Peter Yates movie. He directed Bullet uh, and Crawl and some other stuff. Um, and, <laughs> Crawl. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but it stars Robert Redford, George Siegel, uh, Ron Liebman, Ron Supercops Liebman. Yes, huh? indeed. I know me some Ron Liebman. Uh, Paul Sand, who I recognize. Oh, yeah. I wasn't really sure from what. Uh, and then in a really interesting kind of small role in the end, Zero Mustel, uh, who oh, I know from Moses the Gunn, too. Yeah, Moses Gunn is in this movie. Yeah. Um, there, it is a great cast and it is okay. So it's Robert Red the movie starts with Robert Redford getting out of prison. It's definitely like must be huge inspiration on Soderbergh. Robert Redford okay. is getting out of prison. He's like a former thief. Literally, as he exits the prison, his former partner, who is also his brother-in-law because he married his sister, pulls up in a car and is like, Hey, I got a job. And they just immediately start working on another job they're gonna pull, like as soon as he gets out of prison. And it's to like steal this diamond uh, from like a museum in uh, New York City, I think. And basically the movie is like, you think you're watching a really good crew of guys pull like a really good heist. And it feels like the movie is probably gonna build to like, you know, the finale will be the heist, but then you're only like 25 minutes in and they're already doing the heist and the heist goes wrong. And nice. so then they've got to break one of them out of jail because of the result of the heist. And that goes wrong. So then they've got to, and it's literally just like a series of escalating, like this one job to get a diamond becomes like five other jobs of like having to break people out of prison, of having to like, you know, uh, like steal a helicopter, of having to, it's like all of these escalating. It is, and it's- I just really, added that to my list. And I have Criterion. Oh, dude, you got to watch it. William Goldman wrote the script or is like one of the nice. credited writers. Feels very William Goldman. It's like, it's really snappy. The characters are really funny and really well defined. They each have like distinctive different personalities. It was so much fun. It gets like a little bit long. It maybe like over escalates its escalations. Do you know what I mean? That happens. Yeah. But it's great. And it does have a good oh, ending. It like deep. Okay. Yeah. It, it, oh, really you good made movie. the friends of Eddie Coyle. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, really, oh, really right good on. movie. Highly recommend. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Quincy Jones did the music, so it's got this fucking great nice. pop and jazz score. Like, it's awesome. Okay, and so the guy who wrote the novel that it's based on is Donald Westlake. Okay. He wrote The Grifters, Payback, The Stepfather. Oh, shit. Parker. Um, okay. Is Ripley under? Oh yeah, Ripley Underground, which is one of the uh, Tom? early Tom Ripley. Uh, okay, uh, but I think he wrote like the books that they're based on. Yeah, so he's he's legit. He also wrote uh, "What's the Worst That Could Happen," the famous uh, Martin Lawrence Danny DeVito comedy. Yes. from two thousand one. Uh, um, oh, right on. I assume that ah, sold. I assume that movie answers its own question. By yeah. existing, by being by, a movie, by simply by existing. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I'm not gonna lie, I would watch that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. I what an interesting pairing. It. Yeah, yeah, it's. I could see that because they're both people that I find. I find Danny DeVito funny all the time, yeah. and I find Martin Lawrence funny when he's paired with people that he can be really good with. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yo, not gonna lie, his performance in Bad Boys for Life. <laughs> I've heard this. He's really good yeah it's very funny but it's also like this really like adult and mature performance where i was like shit Mark, look, where did this come from yeah that's yeah i He's would watch good. that but oh man i'm totally gonna watch that i might watch that i've got a lot of time to myself this weekend because uh the play that jenna's in is going into tech so oh, nice. uh okay, i've got yeah, a lot of yeah she's writing, gonna be busy reading to do yeah but i uh Dude, i definitely want to get I a couple movies I in i can't recommend the hot rock enough i had like so much i had such a good time watching it and it's like a movie that like it opens and is immediately firing on all cylinders. You know what I mean? It's Sold, just like yes. the way it looks, the performances, the music, you're just like, you're in immediately. It's, it's really fun. And I recently came across um, Jenna's parents had a brand new fire stick that they weren't using. Huh? So now I can finally watch Criterion Channel on the TV instead of my iPad. Love it. <laughs> that, that's great. That oh. and Shutter. I'm so excited. Dude, that's amazing. I mean, that is, yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Uh, okay, so here's my coup de gras, and it's my coup de gras because it's a follow-up to our most recent episode. I did watch The Devil's Candy, and I fucking loved The Devil's Candy. I thought Dude, The Devil's brutal. Candy kicked ass. It is That family's so, so great. Uh, it is so brutal. Like, it honestly, like, I can't remember the last time I felt, like, kind of scared by a movie, 
and it scared yeah, me. That sound. Oh, I love Boom. that dude. The image yeah. of him, the whole concept of that, that he's, I mean, A, it's a little funny. He's literally hearing Norwegian death metal it like as yeah. like a voice, right? Um, but the idea that he combats that with just droning heavy metal up in the attic of his house is like such a cool metal image. Like I loved like just watching that and hearing that sound and stuff, but it's fucking scary. Like the idea yeah. of that guy and, and just how brutal he is in the way that he attacks this family and the way that he is constantly saying like, don't make me do what I have to do. You know, there's like yeah. the, the, all the, the ways that he is presented and and the brutality and ruthlessness with which he executes like what he's doing is fucking frightening it, it like yeah. was at, very scary to me and there's such a sweet nice family that like lives by that code we talked about of yeah. polite metal yeah yep um you know of confidence and yep. strength and family and love and acceptance and all that yep. but i'll tell you here's the lasting legacy of that movie to me Living in Philadelphia very frequently as a pedestrian, I have to walk between two parked cars. Yeah. I never, <laughs> ever walk between two parked cars and don't think of those poor cops. Yep. I never, yeah. ever have gone through it without being like, man, Devil's Candy was fucked. Also a great example of like, kind of like ramping up tension and then like kind of giving you like a, oh, I can feel safe now only for it to like be continued to be like very unsafe, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I, I Honestly, the only thing that I didn't like about that movie was it is a really rare, because it's 80 minutes and yes. I love a fucking 80 minute movie. And as an 80 minute movie, it rips just like a fucking heavy metal song. You know what I mean? It's like, it goes, goes, goes. And that's good. Like, I, that is not a complaint. However, I actually felt like it's like a rare example of like, that movie probably could have and should have been like a hundred minutes. Like, yeah, I actually- I could have dealt with more of it. I, I think it would have benefited from just a little more time with the characters. Because there were just occasionally moments where she's going like, oh, dad, can I keep the guitar he left here? And like, for some reason, the character is considering letting her keep it. And it's like, fuck, no, you can't keep. No, there needs to be enough time that I understand why he would let her keep that guitar. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, there were just a couple of moments where. And again, I actually think this is OK that the movie does this. I would rather the movie just speed through it. Like, just tell me that's what they're doing. I definitely have to watch it again because like little details escape me still because I watched it when it first came out in yeah, 2015. Yeah. So it's it, been a little bit. There's just a couple of like little things where I felt like I didn't totally buy. It wasn't that I didn't understand, but I didn't totally buy that the characters like, yes, let's continue with the movie now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with just that's the movie and it's fast and I would prefer it to be like, let's go, you know? So I'm, yeah. I'm okay. But I did actually feel like it could have used just a little more. You know what I mean? Like a little more with the characters. You. I think I would have bought I definitely some of those. plan to watch it again soon, especially having revisited the loved ones. Yeah, it yeah. just, it's, I got to do it. I just want that guy to make another movie. Dude, me too. He's got cause... such a distinct style. He knows what he's doing. It's yep. like, I think we covered it on the show where it's just like, is there anybody making movies that are like steeped in just like the culture of metal? No, I like, it's not cool. like this, not like this. Yeah. And, I, and I really appreciated it. It also, dude, it made me realize we talked about this a little bit on the episode, but this movie really hammered it home where it's like, there is a weird thing that I never put much thought into about heavy metal where there is like this inherent kind of like, not all the time, but like Satan is like a part of things that are always talked about and referenced within, especially in this movie. This movie is a lot about like satanic imagery and whether the devil is making him do right. It's like all the flame, like there's all this kind of devil Satan talk and imagery, which makes it like inherently Christian. There's like yeah. crosses in the movie that get turned upside down because we're supposed to believe, I think that this is a demon and the way it's trying to tell us that through like cinematic language is like, we all understand demons don't like Jesus stuff. So here's a cross turned upside down. But like the thing that I never really considered is like, that means there, if you are to buy into the mythology of Satan, you kind of are also automatically buying into the mythology of like the Christ and stuff too. Not necessarily, but like a little bit, you know? It just, I don't know. I don't even have anything interesting to say about I this. Mean, I just I think it's interesting. I do have a counterpoint. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did, I'll actually show you. I have it on my wall. I have my certificate here as a uh, member of the Satanic Temple. And uh, as a quote unquote religion, it's actually distinctly a religious. Yes. It's yeah. more of an activist group with anything. But I'm the reason that it invokes Satanic imagery is not 
to say, not really to be Christian or anything. I mean, one, it's a way to um, gain the unfair exceptions that religions get in our government Yes, to further the activism. Like, the, there's a movement going on right now within the Satanic Temple where they have created a religious ritual that is performed as part of an abortion and that's their way of arguing for abortion availability is that it's a religious right so it's like things like that but the invocation of you know baphomet and satanic imagery is i don't this is not the right word but it's almost a troll yeah it's almost to to poke fun at the propriety of like no we're embracing this fucking evil thing because fucking metal man and so that's the counterpoint but i'm not necessarily disagreeing with what you say i I, because i you know know i totally understand all of that and and i think especially when you're talking about metal it is meant to just like fuck with the squares is the whole idea of the satanic angle of it but they still are putting crosses on everything you know what i'm saying like they still in order to do the like Satan can be separated from Christianity. There are plenty of myths about Satan that don't have anything to do with Christianity, but they always accompany it with the cross when it comes to metal. They always accompany it because yes. they because they want to attack the very specific like Christian kind of like leadership of America, right? Like, yeah, that yeah, is exactly. part of it. Yeah, it's but, as much as we don't want it to be, and yeah. as much as um, the notion that America was founded as a Christian nation is patently false. Yeah. There's no denying that in the fabric of America, it has wormed its way in as the yeah. dominant. And yeah. so I just, for some reason, I was thinking about a lot, that a lot with this movie where I was like, weirdly, like part of what you have to buy into to buy into the mythology of this movie is like Christian mythology. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this movie's version of this is like distinctly Christian. And so you have to buy into the Christian mythology to buy into the demonic part of this mythology which i just thought i don't know for some reason that had never occurred to me before and it like my brain like opened up thinking about i have no real thoughts about it other than just like that is weird and interesting and like something that i would like to investigate more that popped up when i was watching the i watched all the conjuring movies yeah both of them to lead up to the new one which is uh, um but the first two actually hold up great but i I forgot how steeped they are in christian mythology yeah yeah um you know it's very much about there are forces here, the forces of God and the forces of Satan. Right. Keep your crosses right side up. Hold your cross tight. Make sure your kids are baptized. Like there's yep. literally a scene in the in uh, the Conjuring where um, uh, Ed Warren's just like, "Oh, did you ever get your kids baptized?" And right. uh, Ron Livingston, he's like, "Well, you know, we never really well, got around to it." He goes, "You might want to rethink that." Yeah, you know, and like yeah. so, it's very much in that. So yeah, I, I know what you mean. And I was just, I had forgotten that it was like. And even watching The Exorcist, it's like in order to be afraid of The Exorcist, you have to take it from the level of Christianity's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are witnessing a perversion of it that we need to set back yeah. into the status quo. Yeah, it's, it just it occurred to me how weird and interesting that is when we're talking about something like metal, where I think metal doesn't really want to align itself with any kind of Christianity at all, right? You know, but yeah. it's like. There's some kind of, yeah, I was just, I don't know. It was interesting as I was thinking about it, but I fucking loved that movie. I thought that movie was excellent. Uh, and I would like to see him make more movies. That's actually in the, the satanic temple. One of the tenets is that we, is, we don't believe in Satan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You right. know, I more just got it because I like the certificate and it's fun to say I'm part of it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, it, it's really just an activist group more so than anything. Oh yeah. I know. But I mean, um, yeah. But yeah, it is, it is, uh, I, I feel like that is a lot of what metal's getting at, but unfortunately, uh, Christianity is woven into the American, the American yeah, tapestry. It's just so interesting. And yeah, yeah, it is, it is fascinating, but yeah, what a crazy movie. Oh, loved it. I really, really loved it. And, uh, Ethan right, Emery, I'm, fucking awesome in that movie. Oh, really Dr. Good. Nick Papa Giorgio himself. Yeah. Yep. Really Man, good in that he's movie. He's so good in that. And like, if you didn't know it was him, you wouldn't know it was him. You know, he's right, like, right. he's in his forties now, you know, it's yeah, wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great movie. That is, it is fascinating. I, I, I feel like, uh, um, like what you're saying about the Christianity thing, especially in like horror and stuff. I think we're going to be moving away from that as the default good and evil. Yeah. Because there's certain movies, like The Vigil, is a movie that came out recently that's in that's steeped in uh, Jewish religious mythology. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to start seeing things like um, there's this movie called The Wailing. Um, yeah, I haven't seen I, that yet, I want, but I would like to. It's real good. Yeah. Um, there's a trailer from like one of the producers, the wailing of this movie coming out called the, um, the medium. Okay. Dude, it looks scary. There's like a final frame in this trailer that gave me chills Ooh. because it's spooky. All right. Spooky, All right. but like 
it is, you know, it's using uh, an Eastern religion as the core of, okay. of you know, what, you know, the, the realm and at the heart takes place. That movie, The Empty Man, yeah. doesn't necessarily use religion, but it uses the idea of like cryptids and, yeah. you know, I don't want to say witchcraft because it's not specifically that. Um, but yeah, like, I, I like the idea that we're divorcing ourselves from Christianity being the stone cold hard basis at which the battle of good and evil in yes. our souls is fought yes. upon. Yes, yes. But speaking Give of, your of ground, man. Do with it. creepy images, um, one of my favorite found footagers that I only recently caught up with, uh, Severin Films recently put out this delicious Lake Mungo oh, package. Yes, yep. Lake Mungo is one of the most unsettling, creepiest movies I've ever seen. And Severin is not an American company. So right. this is from overseas. But I guess knowing the popularity of it, they decided to release it region free. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, so it's region free. Um, I even panicked when I had this guy on it. Oh, but yeah, I put yeah, it yeah. in. It totally works. But yeah, it's like a stacked thing. But check this out. It's got this incredible just incredible oh, nice. thick yeah. killer book all about the production and stuff That's but awesome. it also has and i've been saving to do this on the air um let me get these out of here sometimes it's like you don't want to break these things so you have to them. but these incredible pieces of artwork oh wow yeah that um were packaged with it um just like you know postcards oh, wow. okay, that yeah, are they did a bunch the, of them um, yeah so very cool stuff. Yeah, but um, I like that it's a great a package, and I cannot wait for a rainy day where I can just like sit back and watch this again. Hell yeah! Because this is a creep under your skin, ooky <laughs> ass movie, and all it's very simple too. It's just you know a girl drowns, and her family during the fallout of her drowning starts dealing with some creepy stuff, specifically mm. surrounding photographs. Mm. Okay, and cool. the way that the that the scares are set up is that the. Uh, it's never like anything jolting or any crazy footage. It's just the camera will be on a photograph and it like scans over the photograph. And then when it's done, you're like, what did I just see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just saw something. And like, it's the kind of movie that like, and then it'll call your attention. Like, here's an anomaly in this photograph. But while it's doing that, there's 10 other things that you don't find out about in that photograph. And so like, by the end credits, it goes back through all of the photographs over the credits. And then knowing what you know is in them and you start looking for what you're, you start finding shit. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> it's so spooky. Uh, really great found footage. And you know my love for found footage. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't resist. And this is cheap as shit too. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah. So definitely uh, second sight films, not Severin. Sorry, I apologize. Well, second sight. Okay, gotcha. Second sight films. Cool. Um, yeah. So that was like my big haul for this week was Lake Mungo. Hell yeah, dude. That's exciting. Yeah, man. That's a good one. Uh, well, you want to wrap this baby up? Yeah. Should we announce what we're doing next week? Do we want to decide? Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, I could try and track down uh, happy birthday to me. Uh, or I don't know if you have other ideas, other thoughts. Um, I would be into that. Um, I would be into if you wanted to try and hunt down Master and Commander, we could do something like that. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. What else was there? What else is a mustache here? This is a good idea. That's a pretty good idea. Um, I've wanted to do the signal for a while. We could do that. Master and Commander is currently on Prime Video, so I could watch that at any time. Uh, meaning, I think that would be a good one for us. I think we could. Yeah, that. we could do that. Do I it. was also going to suggest the box. Oh, oh, Richard Kelly. Yeah. Uh, I might be really into that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see how available that baby is. I'm sure I can get my hands on it one way or the other. Yep, that's available. Let's let's do some box. I think I could be. You want to do the box? Let's do and it. Maybe let's we can do Master and Commander in the future. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and germs, uh, we will be doing the box. Richard Kelly's uh, take on the Richard Matheson story about the uh, press a button and uh, you get some money. That's right. Um, this is. I think this movie is remarkable. I really and I would dare I say it. that it is Cameron Diaz's finest hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's real good in it. I, I mean, recently I like this watched this a like a couple months back, and and was just so impressed. I mean, I'm pretty diehard, all in for Richard Kelly at this point. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I like him a lot too. Yeah, he's making some weird shit. He's on a trip, man. Um. 
so yeah so okay let's do the box i'm into it Very right into on it. all right so did you say that this is streaming somewhere that our listeners can uh i think i can rent it on like youtube basically so it is you know it's available it's, it's floating around out there you can, you can get your hands on it um, okay yeah it is um yeah it's it's literally a dollar to rent on amazon yep, yep. um it's literally two dollars to buy on a variety of platforms yeah so uh nice. it's like extremely available so i'm i'm gonna happily rent this movie for a dollar right on right on okay yeah. the box it is awesome very excited all right movie. guys sm- fucking punch that subscribe button in the face that's right um check out uh moviejohn.com because we are part of the movie john network movie john launched their patreon today oh yeah so there's a lot of cool perks that you can get out of that that have just begun as of uh, it'll be Monday, so if you're watching this the day it comes out uh, tomorrow, that will be available. A lot of cool stuff there. Um, a lot of opportunities for you to hear and see more of us, which is what this is all about. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so then next week is the box. We're at I like two movie. I'm at Dan Scully on all of the things. Um, check out moviejohn.com, findy.com. I believe that's it. Uh, I'm at Philadelphia oh, and Hot Property. Uh, we did the the Nitro Gummy Bear Challenge this week, and it was really hilarious. So definitely check out Hot Property. Hell yeah, yeah! Check out my other podcast, Killer Bees. Uh, we just put out our uh, Rucker Hauer episode. We have uh, another Rucker Hauer episode coming next week. Uh, the big thing on this episode that I cannot recommend enough is that you find the Guinness ads that he made in the 1980s. They are wildly hilarious and on YouTube. Dude, they're insane. Yeah, they're, a- they're absolutely insane, wild. But yeah. they're a lot of fun. That they're very like, funny. super cut was it's special. wild. <laughs> yeah. Some of them are literally five seconds long. They're wild. At the same time, you watch them and you go, oh, wait a minute. This is what Rucker Hauer was designed in a lab to do. 100%. He's perfect for this. Tori pointed out he literally looks like a tall glass of Guinness in those commercials. He's got white, frothy <laughs> he's hair. Got the and foam he's got the on top. Black. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's really funny. Yeah, it's that might even be on purpose. I think so. That's so funny. Yep. Oh, excuse uh, me. Okay. Long day. Let's get out of here. My name is Garrett Smith, and I like to movie movie. My name is Dan Scully. I think I'm going to order a pizza, and I like to movie movie. And we all know that you like to movie movie because we we like like to to movie movie. I'm dabbing to yeah, get it yeah, to like yeah. the kids. Boom.